Good evening. Good evening and welcome to the August 30th, 2018 Millis School Committee meeting, the first meeting of the 18 to 19 school year. My name is Stephen Catalano. I'm the chairperson. Uh, I want to take attendance. Kerry Roach, secretary. Here. Robin Briggs. Here. Mark Conroy. Here. Denise Gibbons. Here. We have no teacher rep or student reps today. And the superintendent, Ms. Gustafson. I'm here. Okay. Jody, has anyone signed in for open session? There is not. Okay. So we have three action items today. Um, do we have any, any motions? I move to approve the school committee meeting minutes from June 19th. Second. A motion has been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. I didn't know if I could go at like one fell swoop and move them all, so. What we could do, we've started, that's fine. We can go one at a time. Oh, I move to approve the executive session meeting minutes from June 19th. Second. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Um, any discussion? Where these were um, executive session to approve contracts, um, just very quickly, we approved a contract um, for a special education teacher, um, and it was approved unanimously. We approved um, a contract for the transportation director. It was approved unanimously. We approved the contract for the director of student services, and it was approved unanimously. And then lastly, we approved a contract. Nope, I'm sorry. The only last item in the executive session was to dispose of or donate up to 200 pieces of older broken furniture, and the motion carried unanimously. So that was the, that's what we carried. So there's been a motion. It's been seconded. We know what it was about. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, it carries. And then the last item is the calendar for the 2019-2020 um, calendar school year. I, I propose before we approve it, if we can actually, why don't we do it during discussion? A motion, please. Mr. Chair. Yes, Ms. Gibbons. Uh, I make a motion to approve the 2019-2020 school calendar as presented. Second, a second. Second. Okay. Motion been moved and seconded. Before we vote. Um, Madam Superintendent, could you kind of give us an overview? Uh, this was a kind of a hot topic item at the end of the school, and we did a survey. Yes, thank you. Um, so in your packets, you have a memo uh, about the survey results. Uh, there were 701 responses to the survey uh, regarding whether or not uh, people were in favor of moving to one vacation in March compare uh, versus a February keeping February and April vacations the responses were 40.7 percent indicating they were in favor of a combined March vacation of one week and 59.3 percent in favor of keeping the two weeks of vacation in February and April uh, we then Knowing that, uh, I discuss with the Millis Teachers Association and the administrative team, and rather um, than having a late, as late a start as we had originally been discussing, we are proposing instead that we have just two professional development days for teachers in August before Labor Day, and then students would start after Labor Day on September 3rd, which gives us an end date of June 17th with no snow days or uh, weather or cancellation days. And uh, if we were to use all five days, it would be June 24th. So uh, by way of background, um, the, the reason for or why we were in question of not starting before Labor Day, which we, although we've started after Labor Day in the past, depending on when it falls, is because of the new construction of the Clyde Brown uh, School and the Elementary School Building Committee requested as much time as they could have um, to do site work and parking lots and prep work, um, which will not be done by the first day of the school, but they wanted to get as much done as possible. Um, and to clarify for the record, 
the school is coming in under budget and on time. There is no delay. There are no issues with the construction of the school. This was merely a way to try to decrease the amount of congestion in a very busy area as they do the outside work around parking lots and sidewalks and drop-offs. Um, when we open the school, it will be safe and it will be accessible, but there was um, a desire, and I don't fault them for trying to get where you're not bringing in hundreds of people and hundreds of cars on a daily basis. Um, we worked with the elementary school building committee. They took as much time as they would take any time, and we gave them the day after Labor Day. So effectively, if we looked at this year as a model, we're only starting two days late, right? So because we were in school Wednesday and Thursday, we have traditionally Friday before Labor Day weekend, and then we always have Labor Day off. So we're not really delaying. And then my other question is, Nancy, when we've done surveys in the past, is 701 responses, is that high or low, or what, where does that stand in relation to other surveys? Um, I would say it's a, it's a very good response. Uh, typically, if you get over 30, 35 percent to any survey at any time, that's that's a good response. And what is 700? 700. What does that well, 1500 we, roughly. 13. You know, it's it's more than I'd say more than half the families responded. I also found that it interesting to see that that March vacation was not shot down as I think a lot of people thought. I mean, that's it's still a spread, but 59 to 41 is closer than. I think a lot of people anticipate we'll see how many s snow days we have this year, and maybe that will change <laughs> if we ever do a survey. Any other thoughts, comments? Any other comments? Yes. No, thank you. Okay, a motion's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Will you forward um, the calendar out whenever, whenever okay. you're back, back in the office and get it out to um, all, all people and just highlight the fact that it is starting just one day. It's starting the day after. Right. Right. Yes. Okay. Thank um, you. Probably next week. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah. I think it can wait. Okay. <laughs> we have time. Okay. Um, those are the action items. There are no student reps. There are no teacher reps. The next um, is a facility update from the director of facilities, John Angler. Mr. Chair, if I may. Yes. By way of introduction, or not introduction, because you've all met Mr. Engler, but I do want to say what a phenomenal job John and his staff have done to get the buildings open, to get them very clean, to uh, have so much uh, work happening this summer. And in fact, um, John was putting finishing touches at Clyde Brown tonight prior to the meeting and uh, still working late into the evening. So um, it's, it really looks good. So well, he has some pictures for it's you. It's the cleanest it will be all year, correct? <laughs> yes, exactly. exactly. Uh, thank you, Nancy. Um, so yeah, it was, in, uh, it, was a, it was a productive summer. Um, besides our usual cleaning of the floors and getting the place uh, as organized as we could. Um, we were able to get through the vents um, because of the construction. There was a good amount of buildup, so I think um, it was a great jump. Uh, usually we do that twice a year. Um, we jumped on it earlier this year, so um, that was very helpful as well. Um, but it was, uh, we did our second phase of our painting. Uh, last year, we started doing hallways and doorways. We were able to touch those up this year and get into most of the classrooms. Um, we did very minimal over Clyde Brown, only for the fact that Clyde Brown is going to be going down. But we want to make sure that um, we are not, by all means, thinking that you know it's only 120 some days left for that school. We we know that we need we have 121 days. And we want to make sure it's it's safe and functional for for the kids there as well. So, but uh, we f did most of our focus here at the high school and the middle school. Um, we were approved on some uh, projects uh, through the school committee. Um, we have a couple slides here to show the, unfortunately, uh, it started a little bit later than expected, but um, the baseball field is in full running to, of renovation. We have, uh, they started Monday, um, it was, so it was interesting having some piles out there on Tuesday and Wednesday when teachers and students got here, but uh, we were able to, uh, to work around it and um, 
and it's it's coming along well. So uh, there was a little hiccup with the irrigation company, so um, it's a little bit behind. We have um, right now we're at a standstill until the irrigation company come out on Tuesday of next week. They will be putting the irrigation into the infield, going out to the outfield, and then coming that following Saturday, they will uh, the sod will be in place and the field should be ready. Um, and fully installed hopefully before the middle of that following week. So um, we'll have it blocked off and hopefully people will stay off it, especially during football games. When I hear, I guess a lot of kids go out there during football games, but we're gonna do our best to block that off to salvage that as much as we can. So uh, a couple pictures here of the field. Um, is, um, again, it's, it might be a little bit difficult to see um, all because you don't see grass. But um, they completely took out the, the infield. A lot of material was removed from the facility. We, we were able to save some loam, and we took some clay as well that we could probably use over at the other fields um, if and when we need for touch-up. Nothing for complete renovation by all means, but uh, it's gonna help us out with our pitching areas, our batting areas, and uh, second and third where most of the slides take place. Um, so it, I'm not sure, if it's tough to see on this, but um, the, the dip in the outfield, that eight inch dip is completely removed and, um, and it's really coming along nicely. Okay. So, so can, John, before you, uh, can sure. I ask, yep. I forget the exact time frame we've asked you in the past, are we going, to, are we're, we're, be, we're under the deadline, right? This will be, wasn't there a deadline that we needed to get everything done in order for it to be ready in the spring? No, um, my my goal is to do it the first day after school, just to get it so it can establish that much more. But um, no, I've been. We have a year contract with this company, and uh, they have they have mentioned that we should be we should be ready for play come spring when baseball season starts. So you, we wanted to start the day after, but we're still within the buffer zone of being okay. Exactly. Yes. And then. Just as a, a comment or an observation, having mm -hmm. gone to many football games, that is a very attractive location yeah. for kids. Mm -hmm. And boy, with that brand new sod, it is going to be overly attractive, mm -hmm. which we're spending thousands and thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we have any resources from your, your crew where we could hire them on overtime during games literally to stop people from going, which is an expense we weren't expecting, but it will be better than trying to have to replace thousands of dollars worth of sod which will cost money and get us back on time but i can't imagine that they're going to stay off i don't think the caution tape is going to be enough do we have, we have temporary orange, fencing? yeah do we have orange fencing even we, the tpw does I think yeah, right now we do have that snow fencing up yeah up, but that's yeah. uh, the way it's set up right now it's completely keeping the kids off the field so um if we're hoping to still get irrigation and able mm -hmm. to hide to see the outfield if we can so if we can at least nothing else, just at least block off the infield, then we'll do such. But uh, we'll take precautions as much as we can to make sure the kids stay off that field. Yeah, just I don't want to see us taking steps and back. I, I would, and this, I mean, we can take, but I would consider putting up a sign, like having a sign taped on the ticket thing, and we should send out listservs, list email, just so parents can see it and reiterate and you know and help right help and maybe attempt announce to it at the, you know when they kind of announce at the beginning of the game yeah because mm -hmm. that was that is the stomping ground for i don't want to say hundreds of kids oh yeah lot. maybe There's hundreds of kids the little, ones. The little yes. ones all run yeah. over there and yeah. they run and listen it's great they're at the game they're watching some of the game and they're playing but yeah. that's not good for us now no, exactly. Just, I'm just concerned about that, okay. like everyone else. If we have the capabilities of letting them play sorted out in the outfield, then, then we will. Um, but uh, right. again, the, the, the big thing is to say to salvage the infield, the new side, sure. and the 16 feet coming off the infield as well. So. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Continue. Um, another, um, another uh, source of in, uh, another source of you guys uh, let us purchase some. Um, other items, uh, we purchased some rugs throughout the facility, um, mostly to try to catch all the dirt as much as we can at the doorways, um, so they're not carried throughout the classrooms. So at every entrance throughout the throughout the school, we have one, two, if not three rugs um, 
we have them on the landings as well, going up the stairs. That's our biggest areas of concern as far as track of uh, dirt collection. So um, we're hoping that this is going to help break that down. Um, I've heard from other people aesthetically that we're adding some color to the facility mm -hmm. and it's making the place look a little bit nicer as well. So um, it's, it definitely has been an enhancement and uh, this will also help with our newly done floor at the gymnasium where we'll have rugs that will now take you all the way to the doorways as well as slightly in the doorways on, uh, during the winter months when you have the snow and the ice and the salt. Um, I think we have a couple pictures of those. Uh, when you have to kind of turn your side. <laughs> um, and then this is our next one. I'm uh, not yeah. quite sure how to turn this one. but. This is another thing that we've installed this year. We've installed okay. two water filter filler station filter stations. So this is where children that are staffed and and and, and the, the kids are able to use water bottles and fill up water bottles. It's been it's been a very big hit um, throughout uh, throughout the school. Um, it's a uh, filtered. Um, it's cool. It's it's cold. The um, there's a little display on there that tells you how many water bottles you are keeping out of landfill. Mm -hmm. And after the first day, we were at 101. And after today, we were over 600 mm -hmm. water That's bottles great. at both places. Yeah. So it's worked out really well. Um, the water bottle sales and the concession department and the cafeteria <laughs> has gone down a little bit. Okay. But um, <laughs> at the same point, point, it's, it's, it's a green initiative and it's, uh, it's working out really well. Where are these installed? Is there one upstairs and one downstairs? Yeah, there's where, there was two. There's one on the seventh and eighth wing, and then there's one in the cafeteria. And we, there is discussion whether we should continue putting them in. Mm -hmm. They were a little bit more difficult to put in than originally anticipated. That's why we ended up one in the cafeteria. We we're hoping to put one by the gymnasium, but once we looked into a little bit more and the and the how the pipes were cemented through the, the pipes were cemented through the through the center block, it was a lot more difficult. So we had to move it elsewhere. We where, are you've, for other areas. where you've put those up, does the water? How does the water get in the bottle? So you just put it's it's a. Um, I'm making a joke that you have. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> so, if you have to explain that you're making a joke, clearly it's not funny. I apologize, John. <laughs> Continue. Okay. Um, thank you. That looks but uh, we also were able to refinish last year. We we refinished the flooring at the uh, for the basketball. The the arts and music department was wondering what about them. So we were able to refinish the floor on the stage, which has not been done in a very long time as well. It was peeling and, and uh, becoming an eyesore more than anything else. So if anything, the dance company is very pleased uh, with, with how this turned out as well as I am. It came out very nice. That looks great. We still had some leftover money from, the, uh, from last year's um, renovation of the court and we ran out of time last year so what we did do is we put like a four foot border going around the outside of the basketball court to enhance a little bit more as well as we were able to put the word Millis in the back in the end corners it's really looking sharp and, and, and yeah. it's, it's a nice touch and I'm glad we we're able to finish it off this year we did get approved for to renovate all the bathrooms at the school and now all the bathrooms have new flooring at this point. Um, the next step is to get um, our petitions done. Once the petitions are done, then we hopefully if we have some money left over, we're going to start looking into the fixtures, maybe waterless urinals, better sinks, and, um, um, and enhance it more that way if, if, if possible. It's just a showing of a couple of the bathrooms. But it was all it was um, six total six total bathrooms that were re redone. We also um, we also tried to enhance the parking situation here at the school. Um, it was it's been especially after last year we had an enormous amount of uh, I think the senior class was one of the largest that we've had in a while. Um, parking was very difficult um, by adding an extra nine to ten feet of asphalt on the inside the perimeter of the, the driveway going around the bus around the bus loop going towards the exit we were able to then create more spaces by putting diagonal um, 
parking spots in there. I think that we were able to enhance our parking of between 18 to 22 extra spaces, which, um, which helps out and could even be more because when people were parallel parking with the grass, they were just pulling in and then there were bigger gaps in between cars because people wouldn't back in, they just wanted to get into class. So this also gives the students and the staff a chance of getting out of their car on pavement instead of the past when they were just getting off in the muck or the mud or the snow. So this, will, uh, this helps them out as well. And we were able to do it along that area as well as we were able to do it along the football field. So um, we finished off that little arc area that had for some reason there was there was an arc area there that we filled in able to utilize it for more parking as well as as you go down towards the press box you can see where we continue the parallel parking but now people have direction on where to park and hopefully they'll stay within the lines and hopefully not park on both sides but well, we still have so we have delineators on our right hand side um, when we have cut back our brush, we kind of made it on the tree on that line, so hopefully they'll realize oh, maybe I'm too far out in the parking lot. Um, at this specific area, there is a telephone pole right across from this car, and um, and then you still have that ditch that kind of dips down a little bit. So um, hopefully during football games and stuff, we'll have police and monitoring it, and, and we'll continue to put our delineators out there saying no parking. I think that's it. Slideshow. Looks like you're busy. It was this a productive summer. summer. Yeah. It was. But there's still more to get done, and, and hopefully it'll get done before, before too long. So, John, this is your second summer here, correct? This was my second summer, yes. Right. So, still, still you got another couple to go before you really have the feel for it. But what do you need? What What's missing besides projects? I'm talking, what about missing from resources, staffing? What after your second summer, the first one you're just learning. Mm -hmm. What what's is there anything jumping out as what you need in order to do all of what you do? And uh, obviously this is just a part of what you do. These mm -hmm. are some special special projects. But the cleaning, the scrubbing, what else do you need? Well, I I, th I think our machinery is starting to get to its its um, ex life expectancy. We have a, a John Deere that's 19 years old that we just put a couple grand in it just to make sure that it's, it's running and, and operable for but us. The landscaping de deer, is that what you said? Yeah, we use that for various things, but it's our it's our big plowing for our sidewalks during the winter as well. But um, besides machinery, you know, like, again, there's a lot of work that needs to be done outside. Uh, my groundsman will tell me that he could use everything and anything. We do have a lot of old stuff here. So i um, still trying to go through that and trying to find out what's best for the, the bang for our buck to begin with and uh, see what we can do and um, but as far as floor machines again with that other machine with that other school going down trying to figure out what we're getting at the new Clyde Brown a lot of that stuff can probably come over to the school so we can have a, a second floor washer on the second floor and we can utilize things like that so um, I'm, I'm still dragging my feet on buying toys, sure. so to speak, but um, um, I'm hoping to, uh, I'm pretty soon we'll be purchasing some vacuums, only because now we're going to need some of the backpack vacuums to help us with the stairways and to help us out with that, and that's, again, that's, that's only going to be an enhancement as well. So part, of, so part of what we're doing later on tonight is the first conversation of a couple, a few, is identifying capital needs for, not just for this year, but going forward, they're looking the town with the new capital planning committee is looking for a 10-year lookout, which is somewhat difficult to do, right? But I think you uh, should work with the, the superintendent and, and the business manager. And even though you're reluctant to necessarily purchase them now, but at least start to, let's start to list them out with useful life so we can, because the town is looking for a 10-year lookout. And some of them may come up sooner but we should identify all of them, even all of these things, because I don't know how long some of those things last. Mm -hmm. Maybe they last more than 10 years, but who knows, they may all cycle out during this time frame that they're looking at. Yeah, and we're, again, we're, we're getting to the point where um, a, a machine to fix it is 1,700, and to replace it, it's 2,400. So, you know, so, you know we're, we're making decisions like that, but you know, I've, it's been a, it's been a joy so far to work with Terry and and um, Nancy and what's Terry and I get to play with numbers. And, and as we've said to you, don't self-edit. 
put it down, and then okay. as a committee and with the admin team, we'll we'll we'll, we'll work through it. But yeah. we don't uh, self-edit. It's not helpful. We need to really, especially when we're looking out ten years. Okay. Great. Yeah, because we might come to you and say, "Oh, we've got this extra money. Quick, we need you to buy something," and then you'll be like, ah. "I'm sure you're going to be able. I'm sure you could. You have some little things here and there, but yeah, without a doubt. But um, um, I, I think we're, I think we're rolling pretty well at the moment, and I think what Terry is about to present later on, um, I feel pretty confident that that uh, unless if something again, unless if something comes up, that sure. we're unaware of. Mr. Chair, I yes, just, just had one question. Do we have an update on the auditorium, the replacement of the chairs? Yep. So um, that was when I first started looking to it when it was when it was approved. It was a 15 to 16 week lead time. So um, and that's from the point of decision making. Um, so I talked to talked to Nancy and the administrative staff. Mentioned to them that we definitely won't have it done during the summer. So I've kind of. We've kind of put it off to the side for a small period of time until we got the school up and running. We are hoping that we are still going to get this accomplished during the February, if not April, vacation. It's a two-week process, considering as far as stripping out all the seats, um, taking care of the flooring at that point, and then it only take them about a week to install all the seats. Um, and speaking to some of the teachers, we started talking about possibly making some removable seats in the front area for... I guess when they have uh, when they have events that I haven't been at, they have bands set up in certain areas, and um, so instead of just having the seats there and them all cramped up, we'll have the capabilities of removing a couple seats on both sides, a couple rows, so they can put folding chairs and and, and make it comfortable for them to as well. So okay. our goal, my goal, is to still have it done before April vacation. Um, worst case scenario, it would be. It would be accomplished before uh, the, the following summer. We paid for that through a warrant, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, a warrant, a town warrant. Mm -hmm. I think we should make every effort to get it done before spring town meeting, the meeting that approved it. Meaning, I understand scheduling and stuff, but I think it would be helpful for people packing the room to come into where we, where where they purchased it in May or. Yeah allocated it in May. Mm -hmm. It would be nice to try to get it done within that first, that same fiscal year that they allocated the money. Do you know what date that is? It's usually the first Monday. It's the very beginning of May. The second first month. No, it's the second Monday. The first Monday's election. It's usually the second Monday in May. Of May? Yeah. And I get that there's people in this building and there's groups at night and on the weekends. I understand that, but it would be nice for the town who allocated this money to be able to sit in chairs at least phasing it if that's if at all should possible be may 13th may 13th um i i buy a rule i don't guarantee anything but i will i will do my best to make sure that's done by then. i get that okay miss gibbons anything mr conroy i'm good nancy we good no thank you thanks. we all set thank thanks john thank you Um, I might fall asleep. Oh, the, the, the lights are on. <laughs> nice. The next, uh, the, we, we want to move on to the Blair, superintendent's report. Can you keep you up? Yes, first of all, thank you to school committee very much for the flowers that are in each office. That is much appreciated and brightens it up, and the staff um, has mentioned that. We had um, two days this week of professional development for staff that went very well on standards-based learning and assessment and uh, improving uh, teaching for high achievement. And then students were in the building the last couple of days and in spite of the challenge of heat, everything went quite well. Students didn't seem to um, be have any flagging energy. They're, they were still excited to be back. They were on task. They were, um, I think maybe people my age feel it a little bit more than they do. Um, but I also want to thank the fire department for loaning us some of their fans. We have as um, many fans throughout the building as possible. 
John and his staff worked very hard to move some of the big fans around. In fact, today the hallway was quite nice and cool upstairs in the middle school. The middle school was our main concern because, of course, the heat and especially on the sunny side. But we also moved students. We um, made um, had lots of measures in place to keep them hydrated. The new water filling stations helped, and they also, the athletic team, um, big Gatorade jugs were in the hallways, and kids were just great, and teachers were phenomenal. The um, August is a, an extremely busy time. We have our leadership retreat, new teacher orientation, new student registration, and during that time also we got the online registration uh, paperless registration and updating of forms ready, so that's a big improvement. Kudos to Jen Starr for making that happen and her staff, and she worked with the school secretaries. Online payments um, expanded. The online newsletter, um, we'll be sending that out again because in the beginning of the school there's, there are so many notices going out that I, I want to send that again probably the beginning of next week. It has a tremendous amount of information. Ideally, it's one-stop shopping. It has links to transportation, food service, etc. Each principal has a newsletter, as do all the central office personnel. and. It's um, an effort on our part to streamline our communications, and it's also posted on our website. We're still improving our website um, so that it's a little more intuitive. In terms of buses, um, if you see some older buses, we, we, our new lease is for six new buses, but there were problems with three of them and had to be sent back. Either things were mislabeled as to the capacity or um, repair, repairs that needed to be made or equipment that was not according to our specifications. So we're working on that. I have to say Mary Jane Driscoll and her staff have done a tremendous job, but um, then a, one or two of our older buses also needed a repair, thus we have just barely six buses right now that are running. We're reaching out to see if we can borrow some buses from a couple of places or lease or rent them on a temporary basis. Um, so both um, Ms. Driscoll and Mr. Wigan are reaching out and um, talking to the, the company and letting them know that we're uh, currently not happy with uh, the service we've received. We hope that that will be rectified by next week. But if you see older buses instead of new ones, that is, that is why. Um, Before you move on, Ken. Yep. We should calculate the financial burden on us on a daily basis, and then when we finally speak with this company, explain to them the cost of the fact that we don't, it's mind blowing to me that we have new buses that were not delivered ready to go. It is the second day of school. Mm -hmm. My frustration is not with you or anyone in this room. Correct. My frustration is with, we, we signed a contract with the company to provide a service, which they clearly are not doing. So there's a financial cost of them not meeting their contractual ob obligations. And then on top of that, any cost that we have to incur to either lease buses, borrow buses and put gas in, hire other drivers, whatever we have to do. If we have to borrow buses from Medway and they only send them with Medway drivers, whatever cost, that should be on top of the bill. Mm -hmm. And if they refuse to work with us, we should look at an out on our, if there's an out on our lease, and recontract. This is, they're, this is not a good thing. Right. I, I know you know that. It's unacceptable, and I, in a nutshell, I believe that's pretty much what Mr. Wiggins' conversation was today. I'm um, a good negotiator. If you'd like me to talk to them, uh, the, probably not. The owner, the owner has uh, heard from me in fairly clear terms. Good. Thank you. So other other than that, everything that else. Positive note. Yes. <laughs> Moving on. Other well, and other than that, um, there 
Spring Street uh, drop-off went very smoothly. The construction company has been very good about getting Spring Street lot ready. Uh, there are a, a couple traffic challenges with the town hall parking lot paving not being open yet so that um, because many parents who are dropping off for preschool and kindergarten would usually park there and walk their child. So that should be rectified by next week. They, we have town elections um, in talking with town hall and the construction company today. Uh, they are delaying the striping of that parking lot so that it's not going to be Tuesday. They're trying to get it done over the weekend, but if that's not possible, they'll delay it to avoid election day and uh, but hope to have the parking lots open by next week. So everything else, uh, we are grateful to Chief Safaya for the details he has provided. Um, the elementary school building committee approved uh, paying for the detail, extra detail around that traffic reconfiguration. But um, Sergeant Dwyer, or Captain Dwyer, went, as he retired, um, when I've talked to him both la uh, both days, he said um, it's getting better already, and people are learning the new the new flow. So um, he thinks it'll be fine. And I think that's it. Thank you very much. Um, anything on the new hires? Oh new yes, hires. yes, new hires. We have in your packets and in the newsletter with pictures and a short bio. Oh, so nice. check I out like our web page. I like that. That's great. Um, the seven new hires this year, um, two due to retirement, or one actually, we welcome um, Siobhan Dooling at the high school, who's a special education teacher. Uh, coming to us from the Boston Public Schools, where she's taught since 2004. Ms. Dooling has a Bachelor of Arts from Fairfield University, a Master of Arts in Liberal Sciences from the University of Massachusetts, Boston. These are very strong hires, by the way. We're very pleased. Uh, Christina Kalatsidis has been hired as the Special Education Teacher at Clyde Brown uh, for Diane Cotter, who retired. She holds a Bachelor of Science from the University of Massachusetts, Boston, and a Master of Education from Northeastern. Yay, Northeastern. Goodness. She comes to Millis from the Sacred Heart School in Roslindale, where she has taught since 2016. And prior to that, in the Brookline Public Schools, she was there for three years. Kristen Keene joins the fifth grade team, and she's a um, half-time teacher, half-time paraprofessional at the middle school, coming to us from the Med Medfield Public Schools, where she's worked since 2014. She has a Bachelor of Arts from Assumption College and a Master of Education from Lesley University. Jessica Keppel has been hired as our preschool teacher and that is due to Janine White moving to second grade where we had a retirement. She is also a um, half-time paraprofessional. She comes to us from the Sudbury Public Schools where she's worked since 2018, holds a Bachelor of Science from Springfield College and a Master of Social Work from the University of Massachusetts, Boston. Kelly Annunciato joined us last year as um, in January as a point for adjustment counselor splitting her time between Clyde Brown and the middle school and has already proven to be a wonderful hire. She prior to this worked extensively in the private sector and also in the Somerville public school system, bachelor's degree and a master's degree from Bridgewater State University in education and then mental health counseling. Kelsey Cole, who had been a paraprofessional with us for several years um, since 2014, is now a special education teacher, 0.5, and a paraprofessional. Um, she got her Bachelor of Arts degree from Assumption College and is in the process of receiving her Master's of Education from Bridgewater State. And finally, Jennifer Latin has been hired as a, our board certified behavior analyst for the district. Uh, coming to us from the Accept Collaborative with a Master of Education from Lesley University. And beyond that, a, um, it's not a master's, it's a, like a CAGS 
um, education specialist from Bay Path University um, as a BCBA. So welcome. Well qualified, highly educated people with experience. Those yeah. are all good hires. Very good hires. Um, so next is the chairman's report. First thing is uh, the board of director meetings for the education collaborative. Ms. Gibbons, are you still interested in? You don't have to. I have some flexibility on Fridays. I'm not teaching these Fridays, so I can make these meetings. Um, in the spring, I'd be teaching, but we can we can probably talk about someone else. But I don't. I know you liked going there, but if your schedule does not permit and you'd like me to attend, I can. I have zero problem with that. Um, Mr. Chair, thank yes. you. As much as I would love to go, unfortunately, I think the time I, it's challenging for me to be able to get there. I understand that. Um, so I would. Sure. Graciously accept your offer if you're willing to be able to attend. And actually, I, I, I see a couple of the dates in the spring are going to be easy. So there's probably okay. only, I'm looking at two probably that are only a problem. So okay. I will work with other members. You, okay. You've done thank a good you. job <laughs> and did a really, brought some good stuff back from tech. So thank you for your service on that. Thank, thank you. you. Um, and then next is the capital plan and warrants. Is there anything? Does the CHIPS approval, do we need to do any action on that? Um, no, the correspondence is just the letter we received from CHIPS, which stands for the Collaborative for High Performance Schools in terms of energy efficiency, saying that we have um, the Clyde Brown Project has successfully completed the design review, review phase of the process, and um, it, uh, it's a significant milestone that demonstrates that the project has undergone a rigorous review during the design phase to indicate compliance with New England CHIPS 3.0 criteria for high performance school rating. And they, we will continue. There is um, a, one more step and the architects and uh, construction team, project management, are shepherding us through this process. Okay, thank you. So we're gonna move on to um, the capital plan. I, I won't say where I work and whether I had access to a color printer, but I do. On my favorite size paper ever, 11 by 17. Robin, does this bother you that I'm giving you paper? No, Sorry. No, no. Oh, this is wonderful. Oh, and copies for us? Is that for me? Wow. That's one to one. one. For no, lots of one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> what? Is there like any of these there's one. Do you yeah, I know, do you, Jody, you don't, you, ha you don't need that. I think we should probably use these for okay. working copies because it's. Right. I oh. changed the colors on the ones that Terry said just because the green and the blue were very dark and the purple and maroon hard to read. So there's in your packet. Yeah. You can. I believe the. Oh, is. did you print in color, going Jody? Did no. print in color. Yeah, we, I'm <laughs> sorry. I should have told you that I was doing this. I, can you, um, oh. Jody, give one to Terry and John? I wasn't going to be able to see Thank this. Thank you. I, I believe I have one. I appreciate the big print. So um, do I. I don't have to. I'm just, so, it's so 11 so by nice. 17 <laughs> is the best size paper ever. Yep. So before we begin, as these guys are um, logging on, I'm here. Um, this is the first discussion. There's two, there's a couple things going on. One, this is a. Hold on, I'm just getting my paperwork out. This is a, a capital a capital planning project. There's a capital planning project committee, right? And that is to look at the 10-year plan. Ms. Roach represents us on that newly formed committee. And I know there was a meeting the other night. We were in a meeting with the Board of Selectmen, Mr. McCaffrey, and he had to go to that meeting. So that's running separate to at this point, the normal warrant process, and Robin, for your edification, a lot of the capital projects and funding things, they come out of the fall town, they go into the fall town meeting. Okay. And so um, that's, that. this is the time frame, although little by little they've been upping the time frame to mm -hmm. you know, July to get mm -hmm. fall town meeting warrants 
Um, so we will, we will present to them when we're ready to present to them. So what we're going to get tonight is the admin team and the superintendent's recommendations with priorities. Those are their priorities. At the end of this discussion, if we choose, if we feel comfortable moving any warrants forward, we will, we will we'll have a discussion around what our priorities are. We'll take into consideration the ranking from the administrators. We can have discussions, answer any questions. So this is just the start of the conversation that we as a committee is not beholden to any of the priorities put forth on this document, but we will clearly, we have people here that pro provided this. And the other piece is, and there was a late email, this is all facility. Yes. As we, as we proceed with the Capital Planning Committee, we have to take those other buckets of technology, transportation, curriculum. I don't want to put just forward a facility plan. Now, I also know that we've done a lot of work with the administration and on this committee to really kind of identify and hammer home some replacement plans and some planning around transportation and technology. So I think the, the work on that, there's some work to be done. I don't, I don't think it's as heavy of a lift as probably this and, was. And if I may. Sure. Two, two thirds of your email made sense to me. One, that's a one third confused me. <laughs> okay. 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 Let's do this. Well, no, no. All right. Be, it, but it begs a broader question, and and one that I actually broached a little bit in my in my uh, my. I, I was reading memo. that while I was driving, which is illegal. Um, so so technology clearly a capital in, uh, improvement plan issue. Uh, vehicles clearly a capital improvement plan issue. Curriculum kind of ties into the issue I raised in my memo, like painting. Curriculum is is operational, but it's also a very significant uh, expense. And so the issue comes down to, it's sort of this, one of these, it's a big expense when you do a curriculum replacement. But it really, if you looked at the definition under GASB 34 and a fixed asset policy, which nobody has in Millis right now, or any number of other things, it doesn't really fit the definition of a fixed asset. Yet, we have limited funding. We have limited funding internally in Millis. We have limited funding from the states, one of the weaknesses of the state funding formula. So one of the things that we as a school district and the Millis Capital Improvement Planning Committee kind of need to help us, we need to kind of work together to define is what's going to be a capital improvement plan project. So is curriculum going to be something that they're willing to define as a capital improvement plan project? Is painting, you know, big painting project, obviously, not doing a room, going to be a capital improvement plan project? If it is, great. It's something we need to work into this. So before, Mr. Conroy, he, here's what I will say, and I'm not ignoring the fact that we're, we're looking at. We don't spend enough money, and we don't have a plan for curriculum. Mm -hmm. We have... When we have some money here, we grab it. When we have some money, mm -hmm. we've done some of this with technology. So it's, we're not doing an adequate enough job mm -hmm. of securing funding. Whether that should be in our operating budget, whether that should be in capital, I, I understand your, your question of whether it's a capital fix. Whatever, we as a committee and we as a team have to do a better job at identifying our plan identifying funding sources mm -hmm. and so I don't necessarily want to put it in this hole here just because but we we, have, we have funded it as as Warren articles right capital so that's where some of my thought process is so I, I understand your point I, I don't want to get lost in the technicality I want mm -hmm. the bigger pullback I can add a little bit of Millis context to okay. it because you're right and that's the the, the different piece of what's con what has been considered capital or how these things got onto being Warren articles as opposed to in the budget. Um, it, a broader definition of something that would last longer than a few years, so three to five years. Right now, because things got over time, not just in the school, but 
out of operating budgets. Right now, free cash funds the town's warrant every year. Free cash funds computer leases, the bus leases. Free cash is the source of this. Mm -hmm. And back well before my time, there were decisions that curriculum, things couldn't fit in the school budget anymore. And it was, they, there was a decision and just procedure that carried forward that something like curriculum, town meeting and, and therefore the finance committee and the town could ensure that the 60,000 down to 2,000, whatever was available, if they wanted it to go to curriculum and went to curriculum, it wasn't sitting in a budget for then a following year, well, we didn't really buy that curriculum. We put it in the budget. We have a line item for curriculum, but we spent it on headcount or something else. So mm -hmm. there, are, there are a lot of things that are, one, because of lack of funding, two, because as a town, we haven't taken the step to put some of this put recurring money behind some of this that allows it to go into the operating budget and some of it is just that history yeah. piece and in curriculum is one of those things that's all I mean 15 years ago when we started talking about Gatsby 34 curriculum is one of those things that was very hard because a typical fixed asset policy that was developed back then you know basically set a dollar value usually something high like ten thousand dollars and because it always had a two-fold test and something that had at least a year's useful life well, curriculum can be over $10,000. The question is because much of what makes up curriculum is consumable, does it really have over a year's useful life? Well, in one sense it does because you're not going to dump the curriculum after a year. But in another sense it doesn't because the materials themselves, much of it may be consumable. And that's where curriculum became one of these gray areas. So I don't want to belabor the point because I know you want to discuss the no, but I, I, I and, and I don't, I don't want to ignore or just kind of dismiss what you're saying. Yeah. I just want to pull back and say we, as a committee, mm -hmm. need to do a better job of securing consistent, mm -hmm. adequate funding mm -hmm. for curriculum. Absolutely. And it it doesn't feel right mm -hmm. doing it on a at the end of the year when, when you, we've saved a if, little if, money. If if you have money, right? If we have money. Right. Now listen, sure. that's not to say that we haven't purchased curriculum. That doesn't mean that we haven't got worn articles, mm -hmm. but it shouldn't be a hit, mit, hit or miss no, thing. No, it should be a planned item. And I don't know what that number is each year, but we got to just we got to figure that out, yeah. and we're probably playing catch up, mm -hmm. and then start to figure out where that funding yep. source comes Agreed. from. Agreed. Agreed. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. Nope. Uh, so again, you are right. What is before you is is largely facilities. There is no, and so let's start there, and then maybe we need to come back and visit. You know, those those are the three items. So what was number one on the administration's list? Uh, and you'll see there's kind of a safety and security theme here uh, for our top priorities. Uh, it really came down to be the phone and intercom system in this building. Um, and we saw that as a twofold system. The, the phone system uh, for communicating in the classrooms is certainly part of it. But the other piece of it we're looking at is an intercom system that not only can broadcast in individual classrooms and of course throughout the building but what we're looking at is something that uh, building principal uh, having a password and using an encrypted system could actually implement an alert from his phone or her phone even if they're not in the office so if they're here in the library and something is happening they can actually implement an alert and a lockdown or, or whatever is needed so that was our, our the, the administrative team's number one uh, in, uh, selection. Number two was a security vestibule out here at the main entrance. We kind of have two versions of this. The version that would be our preference would be a version that would create a security window so that there would be, a, a again, a bulletproof pass-through window so that people could come in and if they need to drop off something, they could drop it off without ever having to enter the building. Uh, John and I have talked about it. That may or may not be possible. So the backup plan is to still have a vestibule, but we might have to build it outside. We might not be able to have the security window. 
Um, third item is, um, and you know this from the new building, is security film around the first floor of this building, in all glass. Uh, our fourth priority was to begin a five-year replacement, and I think this is something the committee had expressed an, uh, an interest in, of all the lockers in the middle school. And our idea would be that we'd get them replaced over a five-year period, there'd be a little bit of break, and then hopefully we would, again, begin that replacement so we don't get into the situation we're in now. Uh, I think our, uh, I'm our fifth priority is right here in this room. Uh, you've got flooring needs throughout the building. This one is really tough. You have seam splitting, you have carpet lifting, and there are some real safety concerns with the flooring in this room. Uh, and we would be replacing this with carpet tile. The idea would be we would have, then have attic stock and our own people could maintain it. So in the long run, it would be actually less expensive to maintain. Um, I'll be honest with you, I don't pretend to be an electrical person, but <laughs> uh, I believe, and this is out in the stage area, right? The theatrical lighting? Correct. Yeah. The, the theatrical lighting uh, has been something that's been a problem for a while. The idea would be to replace the, the dimmer rack and to replace all that lighting. Um, that was one of the top things in the, uh, in the name of the reports escaping me, but that was really one of the top things that was ranked there. And so we had that as the next ranked item. Um, next on the list is currently the desks that are used in the middle high school. Uh, both levels are a single unit desk. Um, and I'll be frank, there's, they're not broken for the most part. They, people can sit in them, but they are not conducive to modern learning uh, because you really can't put them in groups uh, so that you can have group, group work. Uh, they also, quite frankly, for Children of different sizes can be challenging, and they really educationally, uh, you know, we feel are a priority to be replaced. Now, the ninety thousand dollars is a quote to do them all. Okay, that could be broken up again, like the lockers, into like a five-year plan. You know, we could do a few classrooms at each level each year. So the ninety thousand dollars is to do everything. Uh, and that's a firm quote, by the way. We do have a number. That's a firm number. Um, the game lighting, again, comes as a, one of the top priorities from the report. Uh, and again, it seems to me you have some poles that are twisting out there. Uh, I would also say parenthetically, and I don't know if it said this in the report, but uh, my guess is that not only do you, you get the glare control and some other things, I'm assuming that you're also going to get, obviously, the advantage of LED lighting and some other things that, that take place there. And then the, the ninth item, which is really not this year, it's next year. But you have something called the Annex, which was kind of funny because when John and Nancy and I were talking about it, I didn't know it existed. But I kept trying to figure out how to purchase classroom space so that we could get more classrooms here to put teachers in because we have teachers in cart using carts right now because we don't have enough classrooms and then they told me of the annex that's currently at Clyde Brown well when the new Clyde Brown opens up the annex of course at the old Clyde Brown which is still on wheels is not going to be needed and so the idea would be to move that over here install it over here and that gives us at least two classrooms and again would expand the classroom space and we think we're not quite sure, but we think with the way everything sorts out, we might actually have a classroom for every teacher. Not 100% sure of that, but we think so with that moving over here. But that, of course, cannot happen until 20, uh, as far as fiscal year. And then um, I think the last couple of things, um, the 1.91, I'm looking at the spreadsheet now. Uh, is the bathroom fixtures, and this has actually been funded. So this is not something, we're, we're actually working on this now, and you just saw some of that tonight. Uh, the painting I mentioned in my memo, it's 
John has actually done really great work at trying to do a lot of the painting work through the budget. He's probably got, did you say two thirds? Second and third phase, yes. Yep. Second and third phase. So, so a lot of this we've gotten done through operating. Typically it is operating, but this, when you look at the overall dollars here, I mean, you're looking at, you know, seventy-five, hundred thousand dollars to do this entire building, and it's going to come up again. So that's why it's a discussion. In the you're talking about a ten-year plan, how are we going to fund that? You know, eight years down the road, because typically that's when you're going to come up again. And I think though, uh, what was the last one? Oh, the last item that's a number one. Okay, but you'll see it in purple on the spreadsheet, and you won't see an individual sheet on it, is a hydrant replacement. And that's really the first one that you'll see that I've coded as saying that's something that just ought to re be removed from CIP. One of the things I did when I went through this list, and we're still kind of refining the list and tweaking the list a little bit, is if it's under $5,000, we probably ought to be figuring out ways to work that into our operating budget. It just probably ought not to be in the CIP. Um, and that's kind of what I was using as a cutoff. If it was $5,000 or less, you know, probably shouldn't be on this list. I think we should still track it, though. So oh, we, we should track it, absolutely. We have a full facilities plan. Absolutely. It should be part of this. our facilities plan yes. internally. But it, as far as something that would actually we would put forward to CIP, it, it's, it's really not, it, it's something we're tracking, but it's not something we're going to put forward to the, the Millis, you know, uh, Capital Investment Planning Committee. So those are the number ones that we have. So I'd like to stop you there. That's fine, because I was planning to anyways. Okay. <laughs> and I'd like to take them out of order, but to discuss one that's, I think we can shed some light on some things that maybe you're not aware of. That's so fine. let's talk about the annex and talk about moving the annex. In my opinion, that's a non-starter. In my opinion, it's a non-starter because we built the Clyde Brown. One of the promises of building the Clyde Brown is we needed to free up the six teachers on carts. Mm -hmm. And that we didn't need a new middle school, high school, and that the, the, the addition of the five classrooms and moving the fifth grade back was going to help. It was going to be a Band-Aid. It wasn't going to be a permanent solution. We were going to then move the fifth grade back let people resituate, recalibrate, mm -hmm. and then look at what we're doing. If we put an annex outside, even though we own it, and all we have to do is pay for the transportation of it over here, that's going to send a signal that this school is inadequate right now, which, in fact, it, it's, it is to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. That's going to scare the taxpayers. They're going to say they, they, they sold us a bill of goods that is not accurate, and they're going to be coming for a new building in two years when, in fact, we said at the outset it looked like a 10 to 12 year horizon unless there was something mm. significant that went on. I, my opinion, I'd have a hard time supporting moving forward, putting the annex over here. Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, I actually see it a little bit differently in that I feel as if we would be leveraging an asset as a district that we have to be able to bring over here that we don't need any more at the Clyde Brown. Yeah, I understand. Um, and still in keeping with all of the things that we've said with the new Clyde Brown project, that fifth grade's moving back, we're freeing up all of these spaces. In addition, we're bringing over the annex to allow us some even more additional space that we weren't sure what we were going to do with the annex. So um, I view it a little bit differently and think that it might be a viable option for us to get more space than we had planned on originally. Sure. Um, there, there might be a story there for us, uh, a true story, um, for us to be able to tell the taxpayers, which is it's an asset of the districts that we want to be able to reuse up here. So, Mr. Chair, I, yes. I don't disagree with you. I think we have to be really careful about the messaging just because of what Steve talked about and just the perception of us moving something over here for, more, for additional class space. If the perception is or it does perceive that we're, we have inadequate space space here and that we're we're looking for options so where I, I understand that where you know it's an owned asset and it, it might not cost a lot to move it over I think we just have to be careful of the messaging because it could it, it's it's a hot topic in this town and it's going to stir up I think a lot of 
discussion, uh, and we just need to be, if, if we decide to do this, we need a clear message, we need to get out there, we need to get out in front of it, and make sure that we're in control of that message, so it's not, oh, here we go, like Steve said, they, they, still, they sold us this thing, we, they got us to vote for this school, and now we're looking for space. Yeah, and, and so I totally agree with you on the messaging part of it. I, I actually see it as a really big benefit in that we're trying to use everything that we have to be able to get as much out of this facility as we possibly can. And we've told you, like, we committed to, based on where we were three years ago when we made those statements, 10 to 12 years out. And this is something that helps us get there. So I, I feel comfortable that there's a strong message to I, be I, able to I don't want teachers do on carts, right? I mean, that oh, was I know. the biggest, I know. Yeah. other than the roof and all of that. Still, yeah. that was, yeah. it's ridiculous that teachers are on carts. Yeah. And I don't want to do something that prevents two teachers from getting off of carts. Yeah. But I, we were very careful in the messaging and we were very careful in putting our word out there. And I'm not saying that this automatically disqualifies it. So maybe my words of, it's a non-starter, maybe I came out strong, but I also understand how careful we were in, because they were saying they're coming for a middle school, high school. That's the new building. And I, I know people could say what they want, mm. But there is, we, we could be bringing more pressure on us and more scrutiny and more, they're going to start scrutinizing everything by doing it. Maybe not. Yeah. Maybe, I'm, maybe I'm overestimating a I reaction. See, yeah, I still see it differently in that, sorry, sorry, in that we're, we are in keeping with our word in that we're trying to keep sure. that out that far and as part of that plan, we're, bull we're pulling the annex up here and we're getting additional space. So I, 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 no, I, I feel like um, my own opinion um, is that I think it could be a big benefit. I feel like we could control the messaging on it fairly comfortably. Um, we, we, were, we were all involved in that initial messaging part. I don't think there's anything that we said at the outset that bringing that annex up here puts, that, puts us at risk about. Um, because yeah. we said we're going to bring the we're going to bring the fifth grade back. We're going to free up those classrooms. Okay. In addition to freeing up those classrooms, we're also taking the annex. Yep. <laughs> the annex is going to give us a couple of spots because you know what? We're going to we're going to squeeze as much room out of this facility as we possibly can. This gives us a little bit more. And we have, That's a good point. We have also, I think messaging. I think the other piece is we evaluate what we do with that annex. Yes. After. Yes. First step is get the fifth grade over. Maybe it's not 2020 that we, well, at some point we're going to have to have a discussion mm -hmm. about what we do with the annex. After we've flushed the fifth grade, back over there, I understand actually school term. After we, and, but then as we said, we needed to understand what was going on in this building and figure out what, if anything, we needed to do. We've said, and even through this whole process, mm -hmm. when the question of a brand new high school, it was never a brand new high school. It was an we addition. Needed additional, we needed, we needed uh, some type of an addition to address classrooms and potentially a cafeteria were the two major space needs that we had. That, it, but that we weren't going, we weren't going to look at doing anything, at least for a couple of years, mm -hmm. until we understood what this building felt. Now, the annex coming over is also a lot easier than going and asking for an addition on the building, which will make bias even a few more years. If that really ties down to, okay, this really solves all of our... But, but the other piece, the only last thing I want to say, I also, it also becomes a question of where that ant goes, mm -hmm. because it's limited space. there is not a lot of space right. here, and as we just saw pictures, we just, summer was just spent adding parking spots. We do not have field space availability that, that we can lose. So, you know, I think we need to just evaluate it and, and know where it's going because we can't lose field space or parking for it. So another piece and part of the discussions we were having internally with the elementary school building committee was that once you put an annex, there's also a reluctance for the town to maybe fund a new school or to fund a new addition because they're doing fine in the annex. And I don't know how old those annexes are. I don't know how long. They've been around for a long time. Um, supposedly, um, I'm just thinking here, I believe it's about 12 years. 12 years. Oh, what's the useful life on those? Um, 
20 possibly, 20, 25? It'll be interesting to see when we move them on a flatbed yeah. how they're, or how they're going to look. Correct. So I just, let me, I'm sorry, let me just finish my point. The point is, my concern is about messaging, not about useful space. So I, I, I want to just do what's right for the teachers. I want to do what's right for the district as well, because not that we should be making decisions based on how people are going to react, but there will be, there'll be overwhelmingly positive reaction that we're doing the right thing and overwhelmingly negative and it's, What's the right thing? And I just, what Tim Bonfatti was talking about was you run the risk once you start putting up annexes that you may, you may push, quench people's, do you remember those conversations? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That there's a question of whether people, now we're not even close to it because we haven't done anything with this project, but they may say, you've had that annex, you're fine, you get another eight years on that, come see us when that thing crashes and burns. So, I'm sorry, I'm going to. Um, so I just have a couple of things um, new here also. So just in hearing that, I'm thinking as a um, resident, that's a great idea because now we have this extra space. So I thought that was a good idea. The second thought I had was, hmm, where the heck's that going to go? So like you said, we need to figure out where it's going to go. And the third thing that I was going to say is slipping my brain. Sorry. I, I do, have one, I do yeah. have one while you're thinking. Yeah, go ahead. I, I guess so we're talking about what we're going to put forward on, on the warrant article. This, this wouldn't be, so this is not for a year off, so we don't have to make any decisions on this. Right. We would just take, leave this as a priority maybe next year and just, you know, we can just say, hey, we're going to talk about this. We'll leave it on there. There's obviously some more discussion to be had. When do we, we have to move it? To. Exactly. Excuse me. Um, in a meeting today, um, Wayne Taco had mentioned that we have a smaller window than anticipated two weeks after the last day of school, that building starts getting ripped down. Now, granted, they're going to start closest to the building and working their way out, but... So there is a timeline. There's a very quick timeline that I have yet to talk to Terry and, and Nancy about since 10 o'clock this week. So um, it's a lot quicker than anticipated. So is that, so one more question, is that cost that we have in here, and I don't... I 60000 Is that the cost to make it? And to hook it, or what's the cost? Like, is but there a cost that we can move, put it to the side move it, somewhere? Move it, and install. So that's moving it and installing yeah. it. So would Springtown meeting be sufficient, though, timing-wise for for this? It seems because then the check can get cut July one or yeah. The way the way the way was explained to the manager is pretty much yes, you need to get the approval probably in the that time frame and um, we need to get numbers now and we need to make decisions now. It was also brought up by Andrew Lane about maybe the DPW possibly using this as well. So so there's everyone needs to we need to figure out what's going to cost to move this thing and if we have a place to put it. Um, if you want to store it for a period of time before you actually place it or whether we finally say okay this is what we want to go with and this is what's going to cost. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think we need to come back with you with some better numbers and as soon as possible with that. So just, again, just to, if we do put this on the water, it does have to be voted on by town meeting, so we run the risk of it not being approved? Yes. Yes. Uh, I we think do. we probably have until Unless May we have 16. I, I, I don't think. That, that was my thought. That, that when I no. said 20, that yeah. my thought was this was a, a May town meeting issue. So we don't have to worry about it for this town meeting. But I think as part of our January, February, March. Right. To so we can harden this number a little bit. And, and also, you know, figure out what would a store, you know, what would storage mean? Okay. What, you know, I, personally, I'm not prepared to volunteer this space to DPW huh? or other town department until we decide we don't. But it does have a bathroom, so our bus drivers could actually use. The bathroom. Are we good with that now? They're letting us yeah, use the bathroom. The, the current plans have a, a very nice office with a bathroom space. And we accessible and to our bath our folks as a separate entrance. That is yep. excellent. So it is excellent and we appreciate it. So I'm not ready to give right of first refusal to anybody until But I also think Mark you made the point of I don't want to spend money to store it somewhere just to store it. Mm -hmm. right. But that—that that is, we should 
look at costs for that because I'm not ready to give it away by any means. Mm -hmm. But maybe get them into the building, do a year, see how things go. Because it's not, I'm sure the first year is going to look different than the second year, regardless of an annex or not, right? So who knows how things shake out. And so I, I think there's a, there's a way to find it. And if we're also doing this in Maytown meeting, it gives us some time to work on the messaging and concerns that I have. It's, my concerns were not space for teachers. My concern was yeah. that whole argument in that, that we contained and controlled yeah. meticulously that yes. we run the risk of. I still feel like we are in line with that messaging. I'm Even supportive with of being in line with that message. <laughs> So my third thought that I forgot was, in terms of that messaging, we could potentially make it like a maker space or some fun, or a lab or something that's like on top of what we have at the school. So we have classroom space, but now we're gaining this by using the annex over here and having some new initiative in this space to kind of But we still have to free up a classroom. I don't know if we... I don't know if, I don't you, know if, if there's dominoes you could move around. It would, it would coincide with the engineering program, the new programming that, you know, so definitely it would have a teacher in it all day long. And depending on how the space is configured, um, absolutely there could be the engineering course and some materials area. So it could be like a for benefit. Storage. Like now we have this because. Of that. When, when was the last time uh, an enrollment study was done? I'm sorry, what? When was the last time an enrollment study was done? Uh, when we, we did for we, the MSPA? No, uh, MSBA did a thorough one, for, and we have yearly ones yeah. done by okay. NASDAQ. Yeah. So, all right. And we fought them on their numbers yeah. as yeah. houses go up. I can say one more. John, could, is there a fan? Could you speak up? Sure. I can I'm, say I'm, I'm sorry, I really can't hear you. Um, being a newcomer as well. So hearing back and how it's noticed and the people saying, we just bought this thing a year ago, two years ago. It was a 10 year thing. It was, it was a 10 year lease for 300,000 or $350,000. And now we're just gonna crush it. So that's the main reason behind this, to reutilize this thing. Because that money that they did put in, it worked out well for these 10 or 12 years. But at the same point, we're just not it was more than 12 years. I think it was 15 because we paid off our lease. It, it, Peter Sanchioni was superintendent and Kathy Tosi, and the, it was during. Oh, yeah. It was like. Yeah. It was actually. I, I'm 12, not looking to like throw it away. Just, it was, hey, listen, if we got to the point where we're not going to use it, a schedule, yes. we're going to give it to the town or we're going to find someone else. We're not just crushing this in a dumpster. So I, your point's taken. We though. need to find a place for it. Yep. So that was the one that, like my email to Terry, only two thirds of my point was taken, and the other third was confusing. And okay. So let's uh, <laughs> let's let's open up the discussion around the other. Mr. Chair. No, go ahead. Go go. I have a question, a quick one about sure. one of the line items. Uh, just the lockers. I know we funded some repair for the lockers at the end of the school year. So is that first? Can you? And I forgot to I forgot about them when we gave the update. So did that. Do we still have that? Are we? So, so we did get numbers. Those numbers are very high. Um, even just repairing the company, just repairing all the lockers, just to make sure they're functional, working at thirty thousand. I think we were only funded seven thousand. Yeah. So if we were looking to restart, maybe uh, Terry and I, or Nancy, to start talking about maybe replacing, start replacing lockers in the um, in the middle school because those seem to be the okay. oldest ones here. Bank of 20 or 25 of them um, is 4,500. So we're hoping to at least replace, take some of those parts, repair, and then I know there's been a, a push as far as aesthetic wise, trying to make them look nicer. Um, so maybe rolling the rest of that funded money into that aspect of it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I like the re I like the replace plan. Yep. I think I think it's needed. I just I just want to make sure that we don't lose that. 7,000 that we've funded for that tip so we can at least use that. Nope, and, and yeah. we will. Okay. The fact, though, is um, I don't know the exact number. Unfortunately, Terry and I talked the other day, and I didn't, uh, I didn't have the number then. I still don't have the number exactly how many stockers we have. But we're looking at a pretty good price. 
to replace everything. And I'm sure. And, and even with a locker replacement plan, you're still going to need a little bit of money set aside each year. Uh, sure, you know, hopefully we can reduce it, obviously, but you're going to have broken locker doors and stuff that you're going to have to fix. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And I believe the funding, the way the funding went, it's not a source that disappears. I'll have to go back. Uh, but the way we voted to uh, that money was it, it, um, it was not end of year money that disappeared on June 30th. Okay. Not disappear, that's the wrong word. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, Ms. I have a clarifying question. Um, again, I'm new. I don't know how a lot of this stuff works. So I have a question about the hydrant thing. That's on the school and not the town to fix that? Because like, if it like breaks on my street, like, is that on me to fix it if it's on my property or the town? So I just am curious. And again, it, it's, it's not that much money, it, so I'm just... It, I, you know what? It's a good question, and, and I, being new here, I don't know. It varies town to town. Some towns... Uh, the town takes care of it. Other towns, if it's on school property, the town will make the school take care of it. I honestly don't know here. Uh, I haven't actually had a chance. I've met the. I've worked with the police chief a little bit. Haven't had a chance to meet up with the fire chief yet, so I don't know really how things work here. So, but it's, you know, again, it's one of those things we'll work out. Yeah. No, I, yeah. No, I was just curious. And and sometimes you split the cost, frankly. Right. That was, that was pretty much from the Tetra Tech study as well. Yeah. That, that's yeah. From, the, uh, from our over, yeah. overall engineering. And, and their study, their study would not necessarily have identified a who mm -hmm. does something. Uh -huh. Would have simply identified it's on school property needs to be done. So let's dig into a couple of these other ones. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the applying bullet resistant security film to all first floor windows, doors, and glass panels in the amount of a hundred in twenty thousand dollars where is this coming from and why do we need it um name your shooting huh name name your school shooting uh but but not to be trite about it I essentially if you talk well you know more than anyone i, uh, I don't know as much as anyone but i know a little bit about this and yeah. i have concerns about this one all right well let me let me tell you what what it, in certainly the some of the 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 various seminars I've been in with folks from Columbine and, and other places, um, you know, the aftermath of Newtown, which is probably the one that is most, um, is the hardest for me because I was very near there, um, is that the police officers that, that I have talked with after those events and, and the, the instruction, I, I guess, that I've been given over the years is that and, and I, I guess the vernacular now is hardening the schools, is that if you can keep a perpetrator out for 90 seconds, that basically the police can get there and they can get there and protect your school. And one of the things that helps to do that is the security film and or if you're building new sometimes, you just absolutely, you outright get the bullet resistant glass. Um, the film is an option that I used first in Washington, D.C. with the United Methodist Church building. Uh, I've used it again in um, a building in a uh, school building in New Hampshire. Um, it is something that is going to be going in the new Clyde Brown. So essentially, it, again, there's no such thing as bulletproof glass, but what it does is it prevents that glass from breaking under repeated gunfire and helps to achieve that and, and I've seen it tested that 90 second to two minute time frame in which time you are obviously hoping to get multiple police officers on site to obviously deal with that person um, so that's the premise of that film uh, this would be applied on the inside uh, not necessarily my personal preference. Uh, in D.C., we applied it on the outside, and part of the rationale for that is it does tend to be more robust on the outside. Um, but one of the things that when we talk to the vendor, uh, if you put it on the outside, you have to replace it every seven years, whereas on the inside, 
um, basically it will last until such time as it is compromised. And that's why typically it's applied on the inside, uh, and that's the way it's going to be applied at Clive Brown, it's the way it would be proposed here. So I do know something about this, and okay. I do know that in the grand scheme of safety and security in a school, that there's many, many layers to it. Some of it is tar 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 target hardening. Some of it is infrastructure, cameras, locks, all of that. Mm -hmm. There's also a whole piece around school climate. Mm -hmm. And so as a taxpayer, I, and as someone in this business, I also know that. So I will, I'll keep my taxpayer hat for a second. 80% of school shooters are students themselves. Most of the school shootings occur at dismissal, arrival, and during lunch. There are few, if any, school shootings that occur from the shooting outside in. Newtown, he got in because he unloaded an AR-15 into, I don't care if you have bullet-resistant glass, he, he was going to get in. He was going to get in regardless. If someone wants to get into a building, they kill. I'm okay with deflecting them. But if we had a grand scheme, a big security plan, I would put bullet-resistant film somewhere maybe in the middle towards the bottom, and I would look at all of the things that we can do around school climate and maintaining and, and identifying and modeling behavior, identifying early intervention, I'd spend money on threat assessment. I'd spend money, if you want to spend money, hire a police officer. I'd spend money on a licensed clinical social worker. I'd spend that 120 grand and probably get more levels of protection and layers of protection for the school than film that is not a guarantee to stop the vast, vast majority of all school shootings. I'll sign off with you right now. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll sign off with you right now. Okay. Because that's exactly what I told Congress. I told, I told Congress to increase SROs to a level of uh, one for every 500 students. And I told them that these threats don't start when a student is 19. I told them that it starts when a student is age 7. And that they need to deal with this and they need to commit funds for exactly what you're saying. So I absolutely agree with you. So, but so, so if there's a way to redirect this in that way, I'm, I'm with you. So there's a, there's a concept not to belabor this point. No. There's a concept of left of bang and right of bang, mm -hmm. right? Right of bang is run, hide, fight. Run. Chris Safaya and his team coming in to try to neutralize the shooter. And that's great that they can get here in 90 seconds to two minutes. But guess what? Someone's already been shot. Someone's mm -hmm. already been killed. I don't want to be right of bang. Mm -hmm. I want to be left of bang. Mm -hmm. That's what we were talking about in the safety committee. I never want to ever have to test the bullet resistant glass. I don't want to live in Agreed. a, I'm not naive. I don't want to live in a world that violence doesn't occur. I know it and I've seen it. So we're, what are we going to do if we're talking about limited resources? How can we spend our limited resources in a way for the lack of a term that gives us bigger bang for our buck? Like what, what can we do? I'm not saying that 120, if we had unlimited resources or we were making progress on other things that we wouldn't do it. Talking about it in a new construction, you can absorb that cost. It's mm -hmm. easier to eat that cost as part of a $50 million project opposed to taking 120 grand out of a small pot of money in free cash and, do it, and doing something that personally I think is limited at best. I don't fault you for putting it down. I don't fault you for throwing it out there. But I could spend that 120 through the safety committee and through Chris Sapphire and I, I get social workers, I get the threat team up and running, I and I would, I would hire another SRO and put them there. And even an SRO is, is somewhat limited at best. There exactly. Was Parkland, there was an SRO. I, Columbine, there was an SRO that exchanged gunfire with them as they went into the building. Yeah. So I, I, I don't want to lecture here. No, but no, no. But I agree with everything you've just said. Next I point, do. then. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's my feeling. Denise, do you want to disagree with me like you did on the last one? Not one bit. <laughs> nope. Absolutely not. I do have a question, sure. Mr. Catalano. Mr. <laughs> Catalano. <laughs> Mr. Catalano. Steven. Um, so as you talk about, you know, the left of bang, call it, do we, and I know there's a safety committee, 
are we working on a plan to get us there? And we're trying. We're trying. Mm -hmm. okay. it's, it's it's labor intensive. There is some cost associated, but there was discussions, robust discussions, around creating and staffing and stepping up, standing up a threat assessment team, which I think, from as a professional and as a resident. I'd love to see my money being spent. That's my tax payer. I'd love to see my money being spent on that because we can we can clean up a lot of little things before we ever get to the big thing. So I know that's not technically capital, but if we have costs associated and we're talking about a capital plan to the town so we're transparent and we can show them what our costs are, I mean, is it something that we may, and again, I know it's not capital, but somehow get it out to the town that this is something that we're working on and this is what it's going to cost. I know maybe it's another tab to our plan or maybe it's... Or, or, or it's through our new business manager, maybe we identify things in our operating budget that can be moved over to capital, freeing up that money in... And it's not, it's not an overwhelming cost. It's time and training. Mm -hmm. There's ongoing costs, but once you get up and running, yeah. it's... So and quite it's honestly, it's not much plan. different. There's a lot of it going on right now, but it's really for formalizing it and structuring it. Right, and then maybe it's just another tab that just has a safety, you, that we outline the cost to the safety plan. So at least when we're looking at overall money, if we have money somewhere, we can say, hey, what's, you know, what are we trying to fund on, you know, as far as the, the safety plan or the threat of, I don't know. I, don't I would know. put I'm not school a security. The terminology. I'd put either school security, building sec security, slash school climate, right? Because yeah. that's what... School climate is the term. It's important to add because then if you know, we are looking at Warren articles or we are looking at asking the town for something, if you have something there, maybe we put it forward as an overall safety plan that we need help funding to get mm -hmm. going. I think, I think there would be, I can't speak for the voters, but I think there would be supportive. I think so too. Trying to be proactive, trying to prevent. Mm -hmm. yes. right? yeah. A rapid response is great, but that's, there's been bloodshed and we don't want, we never want that. Mr. I, Chair. I, I'm sorry if I came on strong on your... No, I agree. Mr. Chairman, yes. I agree with you. I wrote it. I'll show you the letter that I wrote in... I have no ...months doubt. ago to no Congress, doubt. to the many congressmen and senators that I know. So I'm absolutely in agreement with you. The, the one thing that, putting this on here, it sparked a conversation that we really haven't had here. We've mm -hmm. talked about it kind of here and there. It's, it, it was helpful. And Mr. Chair, just so for the viewing public, I think um, it's um, interesting to note that when I arrived here in Millis, we had one school adjustment counselor shared by the middle, middle high school. This committee uh, brought that extra FTE in and last year added, um, well, it's a reconfiguration, but it has the same effect of focusing on social emotional learning. We have a social emotional learning action plan now. And um, the more personnel than we had on this, and we agree 100% in the safety committee um, meets several times a year to with the chiefs and with Mr. Catalano and the administrative team to talk about all these issues. And we all agree that prevention and school climate are, are, are um, again, the best, the best approach. We work a lot on school climate with our advisories and everything and having kids always have an adult that they can talk to. And, and on the other hand, we, we know there are some other things like maybe the vestibule that might be um, you know, worth pursuing at some point. So, or uh, panic buttons and things like that, that that are being discussed. So I, I would say, does anyone else have any comment on the board? So um, my sister-in-law was telling me that they live in Burlington, and I guess Burlington just completely redid their safety and security at the high school, and I, I, I forget all the fantastic things that it did, but it was something that whatever alarm was pulled. Shot spotter. The, the police would know exactly which one and where to go. And so maybe it's worth talking to them about what they did and how they implemented it. I know that like Governor mm -hmm. Baker was talking there um, earlier this week 
um, about things that he's trying to do too um, in terms of, I think they have an officer there or someone there that there's like this say something campaign where kids can go in and just like say, like, this kid's acting a little different today. Um, so I think it's worth exploring what other schools are doing that's working mm -hmm. um, as well as some of the things that you very well know, Steve, from your 33% of all school shootings, one or more person knew some aspect of the, of the attack. And they just, oftentimes they had no place to go. I think things are changing a little bit on that, but that's, people know. It's from social media mm -hmm. posts, it's from messaging, it's from cryptic notes, it's from language, so there are things to say. I just know that she said it's like working really well in their town, and so it might just be worth looking into what they're doing. Thank you. So the one thing I would say is I like the phone and intercom system. I think, yeah. mm -hmm. I think communication is incredibly important especially forget about a shooter forget about say there's a medical emergency in a classroom right mm -hmm. and the teacher's not in a position or sends a student a runner to go get someone and the student doesn't necessarily carry the right message right undersells it oversells it who knows i i think a state-of-the-art system that allows texting and messaging and password whatever it is and the fact that an administrator doesn't have to try to make his way back to the front office to send the message. I think that, I think that is important. It's, that's a big price tag, but I think an effective communication tool is, it, ha, it, 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 it has its benefits. When do we have to send out the articles? We're trying to work on that. We're trying to figure, I think they wanted them in August. Like early August. So if I could, do you mind if I give my, kind of my opinion on the number ones? Sure. As we, so I agree with you. I think the intercom, I'd be comfortable putting that up now. I think one, one, two, and one, three, I think are more, I would defer to safety school, safety, safety school committee to come mm -hmm. back and say, yes or no, or whatever larger plan. I think the 1-4 could probably be more of a spring thing to put 20000 or if we could find recurring funds. We're probably not going to do that work during the school year anyway. I would support putting the, the rug for in here and the uh, electrical. So one five and one six. I think the furniture. We could. I would defer till spring and see what our budget looks like for next year. I think the poles are necessary, but there's no realistic way that that's uh, funded at a Warren article in November town meeting. Like that's probably that's a bonding. That's a, right. That's a larger truly to the capital planning mm -hmm. committee mm -hmm. to roll into mm -hmm. some large bond fund. Um, and then the next couple were already, oh, so the annex we talked about, we'll figure that out for the spring. We've already funded 191. I think the, nec the next two that we'll be working on, we just kind of work and look at that again for the work on the next summer, okay. predominantly. And then the fire hydrant, I don't think that's a wonderful more hour, but I think we can figure let's out think, let's one if right. it's us or them, and then right. we'll just find it. Yeah. Five grand. Yeah. Five so. grand at the very beginning of the year, I think. So three, so three items to put forward. What did you, Mark, just, I'm sorry, I was not taking. So if we go to rank, it's 1.1, 1 1.5, 1 and 1.6. So 1, 1.1, 1 1.5, 1 1.6. 1 so you, is that your rank right there, one, two, three? Uh, or you want to just say those are your three? I would just put, send all three. Okay. I, I would Why don't we do this in some semblance of order? Yeah. Denise? Mr. Chair. Yes, and you don't have to limit it to three. Mark limited it to three, but. Uh, I totally agree with number 1.1 1. 1 being number one on my list. Mm -hmm. I'm a little torn on 1.2, but I agree with Mark's point on like to see that discussed across the school safety committee first before we put it up and do anything. Um, outside of that, I would agree with 
Mr. Conroy's. The 1.5 mm -hmm. and 1.6? And 1 1.6, 6, yes. Okay. Ms. Roach? So I, I agree. The only thing I would add, you know, I have a thing for the lockers. Um, <laughs> if we could get some of them done during, there's winter break, there's February break. I'd love to see some movement on that. So I don't know, you know, maybe we put it forward, maybe it gets voted on, maybe it goes through, maybe it doesn't, but I, I really am behind the locker replacement. So, so you want 1.1, you want, you want lockers, 1.4, so I think I'm adding, I think I'm asking or requesting to add a So four. the same three and then add lockers. Yes. Okay, Ms. Briggs. Um, I, I agree with what you said, Mark. I, I, I want to add the, I want to add the desks as a teacher. Like, come on, I want the kids to be able to like have their 21st century learning going on. So I don't know if you can add like a couple of desks, but I, I mean, so I think that safety is important. I I agree um, with the, all the safety ones. The lockers, fine, Carrie, you can have that. Um, <laughs> and the other stuff can wait. I, but I mean, I can see people saying like, okay, like this is for the kids. Like I can see people being on board for safety, and I can see people being on board sure. for like direct needs for students. But I so for one point seven. Okay. So, some part of it. So I'm a one point one. I'm a 1.5 and I'm a 1.6. So that across the board, those got all five votes. I, too, everyone just limited themselves to either three or four votes. I, I, I like the locker idea in the middle, in the, in the desk chair. And maybe, maybe, maybe the desk chair, we, I know it's a, you put the 90 in there. Is, can you piecemeal it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's what he said. You absolutely. did say that? Yeah, so we, yeah, yeah absolutely. We could do the 20, we could do 20,000 and 18,000, which would be the 90 divided by 5. Yeah. Do it. I like that, right? So that's where it's not all <coughs> safety. It's the safety and it's the, it's the lockers and it's the, the desk and it's lighting, right? So it's not that we have to look at spreading it all around, but it is, there's a benefit to the, to the town for the lights, right? They've, so far, they've been supportive of the auditorium and getting those new chairs in. And then we're going to get new PA systems. We're going to get, we're going to, we're eventually going to have a nice mm -hmm. auditorium that's being used all the time now and it'll be better for it. So I, 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 I think I'm going to throw a vote for each of those two and then we just divide it instead of 90. Do you want to use 18 or you want to just do 20? Should we just do 20 and 20? So, as a committee, is that what we want to put forward on the warrants? There is another warrant article. It's more of a, it's a technicality, and we need to we need to ask them to bring our money to give us our forty five thousand yeah, dollars. That will not have a tax impact. That no, no tax right, impact. Right. No tax impact on the other one. And I think it was clear from mm -hmm. earlier discussions that we need. We need Maybe bus? we should buy three buses opposed okay. to security film. Maybe that's a better use of our <laughs> that, 120,000. Not that to, might be true. to make light of security, but um, any other discussion on any of the other items? And I just to echo what Mark and others have said, um, I, I want to continue the conversation about the security piece. I want to I want to talk about the threat assessment. I want to talk about the environmental changes. And some of the impacts that we can do, I think, I think we should get a. It's very busy right now, but I think we should get a security meeting, a security uh, safety task force yep. meeting sooner September. than later, and start to do it. We still have, we still have Maytown warrants, right? It's not. I think if we can go through a process and kind of talk about yep. things and maybe come back with a hybrid approach of. I I I think that. The and, intercom are, pieces. and again, as part of this, we are working on technology planning, and we are working on the vehicle planning as well. So, so that's that begs the question: is there is there anything right now that's coming out of your discussions with Jen Starr and is it Mitt Driscoll? What's her first name? Mary Jane. Mary, Mary Jane. Jane. Yep. We took care of the vans this summer. Right. We're, so the we're process good on the of, vans. Mm -hmm. We're in the process of doing quotes for the vans. The two vans, right? Yeah, the two vans. The technology, I think we're I good. 
Yep. So I think yes. we're, we're I think we we have to worry about that for the ten year plan, but I don't think that impacts our no. submission of warrants no. for the nothing, fall town nothing, meeting. Nothing for fall. Nothing for fall. So Nancy, do you have any any additional thoughts? I, I no, I think though that I would agree with the thoughts, and it, uh, I'm hearing that the kind of the the order of priority is one 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 five one six, and then one four and one seven They're kind of a tie. in either you know. Um, a tie priority, yeah. or or is there um, as I we usually submit yep. them in yeah. in priority order. Is there someone ready for a uh, motion? Sure, Miss Gibbons. Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, before I make the motion, do you want me to include the must fund Warren about the the bus returning? Yes, so I'll include that one as well. Okay, uh, Mr. Chair, I make a motion to put forth to the board of selectmen. Yes. The following warrants. Um, a vote to withdraw bus purchase funds allocated at 2017 Springtown meeting for the amount of $45,000. Purchase of middle high school intercom phone PA system based on VoIP, $100,000. Locker room replacement plan at middle high school in the amount of $20,000. Uh, library floor replacement in the amount of $45,000. Electrical service and distribution in the auditorium for $104,605. Middle school, I'm sorry, middle high school furniture replacement in the amount of $20,000. Motion's been 20,000 as opposed to 90. Correct. That's right. Do I get a okay, second? So second. number 1 is the must fund. Uh, correct. For uh, 45 wait a minute. Yep. Wait a minute. Must fund for 45 and then you're mm -hmm. going to go down under potentials number 1 for um, $100,000 for the Intercom yep. number four yep. to 20. the lockers for twenty thousand. Yep. Number five. five for the for the library floor for forty five thousand. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Number six for the electrical service and mm -hmm. distribution for one hundred four six zero five. Yep. And then number seven, but only twenty thousand of the ninety. Correct. That's correct. Okay. Thanks. So, but those are not in priority order, but they are in the order of the the motion. Oh. Okay, I thought that was. I'll take idea. care of priority okay. order. Well, so. what's your prior? What? She had the lockers. As, she read it down, yeah, so the yeah, lockers right, actually go to the bottom. Is. So the lockers in the furniture are at the bottom. So if you move so right. four, four, yes. four to the bottom, yeah. and four yeah, flip. Yeah, if you just move four to the bottom, then you're good because that'll put furniture so and. Then it's one five move. six four. Yep. One, one five six seven four. Yeah. Yep. yep. That's correct. Yep. Exactly. So one, five. Six, seven, four. four. Yeah. That's the yeah. priority yeah. order. Or you could do and one, then, five, six, four, seven. <laughs> 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 Terry, Terry's already re ranked him. So, <laughs> so the motion's been made by Denise, seconded by Miss Roach, who's still pushing for four being ahead, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You're getting $7,000 worth of lockers to this year. Yes. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very Thank much. Thank you. John, you can keep that color 11 by 17. Or you know what? <laughs> Get, give it a Terry. That's that, that, that nice paper. You can't read it, right? Yeah. Don't tell Harvard. Just that that's I, Steve's favorite. Color. I'll donate mine. <laughs> <laughs> that's insulting. I've written that is. You no, I've waited written, and just thrown it away. Like I, no, no, else. no. I've written all over it, though. You can't have it now that I, I recently did I write anything bad. All right. <sighs> okay. Next on the agenda is an elementary school building committee subcommittee report. The Looks good, doesn't built. it? Doesn't the, it look the good over there? They're really the doing a lot. Being built. No. Um, the traffic pattern is <laughs> working. Is there anything else to add? Correct. Um, no, uh, a fairly exciting milestone at the next meeting. We'll be talking about fixtures and furnishings. And that that's color scheme. Color, that's right. Color scheme. So turn off Netflix and go if, to the ESPC. If you would like to have your voice heard, it is an open meeting. When um, is that? I think it's the 18th. The 18th of yeah. September? Yes. That's right, because we need the 11th. Correct, yes. 11th. Yeah, so the 18th of September. 
So uh, a fairly exciting milestone, as, as the chair mentioned earlier. Um, really, all the parties are really doing a fantastic job. Uh, you have a school. If you haven't under, been there for a while. Yeah, it it's impressive. And the, um, the under budget component and the low amount of change orders and the money that they are managing to is, is quite impressive for such a big project. Good. Okay, and we already went over the correspondence. Um, school committee announcements. Okay, none. Is there any old business, new business? So we are going into working session followed by an executive session. So we will not be coming back into open session after executive session. So we need to make a motion to go into working session and then we need to make a motion to go into executive session after working session. Is that correct, Mark? Yes. So can I get a motion to go into working session? Not to return to open session. Yes. Second. So, oh, okay. so move motion. second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. So now the executive session motion. Happens can we do that from working, working session? Yeah, yeah we, do we do it in working session. Yeah, we'll do a roll call in working session. So good night. The next televised meeting of the Miller School Committee will be September 11th mm -hmm. at 7. Yeah. New start time. I'm all for it. That's great. Don't be late. Working good. It's 9 oh one. We only have three hours worth of work to go. <laughs> good night. Good night.